Hey, Billy Bob, what you over there doing, man? What does it look like I'm doing, man? Trying to go pro 2021. You know, I've been throwing spin, spinning rods all my life, and I'm trying to master this bait cat. But I keep backlashing every cast. I don't get it, man. How am I supposed to be flipping and pitching and working and cranking? Can't do all that with a spinning rod as good as you can with this. I want to rip some lips like y'all do on YouTube. Well, Billy Bob, let me see, let me see that rod for you. All right, let's check her out. See, there's your problem right there, Billy Bob. Your uh, your tension knob is too loose. Your bait's falling too fast. Let, let me let me straighten it out for you real quick. See, the thing with bait casters, you want your lure to barely fall, just like that. That way, you can take it. And you know you gotta use your thumb sometimes, depending on how good you are at throwing it. Here, Billy Bob, you try to throw it. All right, let's check this thing out. So I put my finger here. I put my finger here. No, Billy Bob, you gotta put your thumb on it. So like right here. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. Yee What's going on guys? Welcome back to Turner Fishing. Hope you all enjoyed the little skit, but if you're like Billy Bob and a lot of people out there, I mean, you grew up fishing spinning rods. Don't get me wrong, I did it also. So transferring from a spinning rod to a bait caster. Now don't get me wrong, spinning rod can do pretty much everything you wanna do with a bait caster. But there's some applications where you need a stiffer rod, like, fishing heavy cover or fishing grass or I mean me personally I would rather crank with a bait caster because you don't get so tired as opposed to a spinning reel and you can use heavier line for the most part without losing the capabilities of whatever you're using now if you're perfectly fine with your spinning rod go for it but if you want to learn a bait caster stay tuned to this video So the setup I'm going to show y'all today is, is about as cheap as it gets. This is a cherry wood HD rod from Walmart. It's a seven foot uh, medium heavy. This is my Carolina rig rod or a jig rod. Sometimes it depends. I have another seven four jig rod that I use. And the bait caster we're going to talk about today is an Agility Shakespeare. You can get these bait casters at Walmart for thirty dollars. Uh, sometimes you can catch them on sale for even cheaper than that. I've had this one a pr probably over a year now and the only problem with it is if I use too big a weight on a Carolina rig it will wind backwards sometimes but other than that I mean I, I love this reel. I, I use this reel a lot when square building and uh, throwing a lipless tube because this reel will throw really really good with like 12 pound on it. So I got this thing loaded up, uh, I believe 17 or 18 pound big game uh, trialene. So first and foremost, let's jump into how to throw a bait caster. All right, you got this button. This button controls everything, but you're, you're not going to worry about that button right now. When you first get a bait caster, I'm hung in a tree. Hold on. All right, trying to make a video tree. All right, when you first get a bait caster, the first thing that you want to do is lock your brakes down. Now, on the agility, it has a minimum and a max setting. So, if I go all the way this way, that's minimum. And what that's going to do is your your reel is not going to do anything when you do it. It's not going to stop itself or anything. All right. Now, when you go to the max, like that, you're going to have a brake system. The brake system controls the spool. I mean, this spool is here 
with this tension nut right here. And that's what controls everything. Your tension and your brakes. And also your thumb and the way you throw the rod. I mean, that's one key thing. So what I like to do when I'm teaching my kids or my nephew or anybody else, put them, put the, put your brakes on max and sit there until you're comfortable. All right. So the next thing you want to do is your tension nolly uh, knob, but I'm going to go set the camera up over here and I'll meet you back with that one. So like we were saying before, this is your tension knobby right here it's your adjuster if you crank it down it loosens your spool up see how that spool is moving now if you're flipping docks that's what you want but that's another video so what you want to do get the end of the rod and focus now you see how when i hit the button it just goes down without stopping so if it's doing that you want to tighten your tension rod tension knob not rod <laughs> see I got the button click now and it's not moving except when I jiggle it so you want to click the button and you want to loosen your tension until this bait starts moving on its own just like that so now when I click the button, it's a, it's a slow, a slow and steady fall when you click the button. You want your bait to just glide down, just like that. So once you've got your tension where your bait is just falling like that, if you couldn't see it in the, in the frame before, you just want it barely going down. You've got your reel set to max or whatever setting make sure all your brakes turn on it should tell you in like your manual or whatever so the way i try to teach how to throw a bait caster you know you're used to a button reel or something and you want to go overhand i mean overhand's fine don't get me wrong but the easiest way for me to throw a bait caster is i want to take my left hand and put it on the bottom of the reel take your other hand like this so it's kind of like you know like you do a baseball but you want to have your hand at the bottom other than a reel it's kind of a swoosh motion and the trick is you press your button and when you get your arm out that's when you want to let go but when you when you let go of a bait caster see if i can get it there you go oh, this way when you let go, you don't want to do that because then your reel is going to do this. It's going to backlash. That's what's called a backlash. It isn't a bird's nest. It's a backlash. You'll know if you get a bird's nest. And we'll, we'll talk about preventing that in a minute for new people. It's a real simple trick. Let me get this one out real quick. There we go. But the trick is, you hit the button, and you want your thumb to barely skim that line as it's free spooling out. And this keeps this free line from kinking up like this. like Because, I mean, most of the time that's what a backlash is. Let me grab my rope and I'll show you better than the line. But say you've got your spool, this is your spool. When you're letting it out, this line does this. And as it gets looser, these other ones get looser and they jump out. But with your thumb there, you're not 100% gonna stop a backlash, but it's, it's a lot greater chance of you not to backlash if your thumb is spooling that line out. And you can also stop it that way also. You know, you throw, you're gonna hit a dock or something, Press your thumb down. It stop. You throw and you start backlashing. Press your thumb down. It won't be as bad. So 
we've got press your thumb down you're hoving your thumb over the line and just do that a couple times let the bait fall and hold your thumb there and just barely nick that line you can feel it under your thumb that's where bass thumb comes from the term bass thumb it's where you've got a lot of nicks and crannies on your thumb sometimes i have to tape my thumb like if i'm on a good crankbait bite i'll bring a roll of tape and tape my thumb because it gets so raw so you're there you want to take go down with this a little bit and you just kind of want to pitch it all right so you do that a couple times pitch it see how far you can go now don't, don't free don't uh throw it as long hard as you can just pitch it a little bit once you've understood you know let me get back here you're letting it down you feel it on your thumb you're pitching it a little bit you know you can, you can even try a little flip and you can even do overhand if you want but once you understand that you're gonna backlash and to weigh like I know my nephew a lot of times he doesn't throw as far as he really can because he's scared to backlash so to prevent that you want to take it you want to pitch it out and then free spool it just a little bit and get you a piece of tape uh, black tape duct tape something and you want to tape Oh, about lost y'all but you want to take just a little bitty piece of duct tape it, it doesn't have to be big I tore off this little bit and I'm gonna tear it again so probably about a, the size of a quarter piece of duct tape and I'm gonna put it straight on my spool of the line now you don't want it touching the sides of it or anything like that so straight on my spool of line and then you're going to wind in once you've got your duct tape or just any black tape or you could try scotch tape but I, it may not work you just take it and it's not going to go any further than that duct tape so the most you can backlash is what you threw out so you don't have to be scared about throwing you know that gives you the opportunity to take it and just lob it and it gets to that duct tape it stops And so I'm going to show you, I'm going to loosen my tension up and backlash on purpose. See the backlash? All right, we're going to pull it out. It's going to go straight to that tape, and you're going to be fine. It's as simple as that, guys. Don't be intimidated by a bait caster. It's one of the funnest ways to fish. And uh, make sure you all hit that subscribe button if you want to learn how to flip, how to pitch, and all that. We've got those videos coming in the next couple weeks. And I'll catch y'all next time. Yee!